in the affluent parts of Europe, uh, people tend to place their value upon the kind of things that they have. It's a very material, material, materialistic society that we find ourselves in. And uh, as a result, even people who are in the body of Christ tend to be affected uh, in the same way. <clears throat> but it should not be. Because in actual fact, a man's value as a human being is not dependent upon the things that he possesses. Um, if you want to find, you know, value in what you have, <clears throat> sorry, you want to find identity in what you have, you want to find uh, identity in, in, in value, perhaps some gift in money or material things, unfortunately, I can promise you that you can go and gather everything and it will still not satisfy you. You may have the best voice and be able to become the latest person in town after Michael Jackson and maybe perhaps you might even have more uh, uh, of, of, of uh, the worldly recognition than him. But still, that part of your being <coughs> where you are seeking that kind of satisfaction is not going to be satisfied with the fame. And neither is he going to be satisfied if you amass wealth and you, you, you kind of gather money uh, like the sun on the seashore. It's still not going to satisfy you. Why? Because man basically is not a material being. In Genesis chapter 1, the verse number 26 and 27, the Bible said, God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over everything that uh, the Lord or uh, that creep up upon the face of the earth. And uh, as, actually, if you check your scriptures, you find out that uh, every time God speaks, it was so. So it's only in the case of man when God spoke that it was not immediately so. Uh, in other words, God was calling things into existence. And uh, when he came to man, when he spoke, it didn't seem immediately clear that what he spoke had had effect. It wasn't obvious. So, so obviously, whatever it is that was created as a result of God speaking, when he came to man, was something you couldn't see with your naked eyes. However, if we are to judge God by his track record based upon what he has done in the past, and uh, for that reason, what he has done by what he said, then we could have said that in the same way that he said, let there be light, there was light. And, 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 and in the same way that he said, let there be a firmament, etc., etc., one would then say that in the same way, when he spoke, something happened. It's just that it was something that was not visible to the human eye. Well, what really happened? What did happen is that in that moment when God spoke these words, man or the essence of man was formed. Well, formed, but where was he then? He was still formed and still kept in the heart of God. And so after God had done this, the Bible said that God made from the clay, and, and he formed the kind of structure that we now seem to recognize as, 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 as human beings. And after he has formed this man, the Bible said, he now breathed into that area of that formulation, which we now know as the nostrils. He blew into that part of the being, and then man became what? A living soul. So obviously, it is clear that the kind of thing that God blew into man is the thing that caused the change to come. So then this person that God said, let us make man, you know, and he didn't seem to be somebody that you could see immediately. This was the person that was formed. This was the individual that was formed and stored in the heart of God until his house was made on this planet. And then he was released by the simple act of blowing air from, 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 from the heart of God into the nostrils of man. Now, obviously, whatever it was that God blew was so powerful, powerful enough that when it did enter into this clay, this clay couldn't help 
uh, being different other than the clay that it was, it had to change, and it changed and changed drastically. It changed so much so that 100% of it was no more clay, but it became flesh. And so that's that's the kind of person that you and I are made of. And, and I'd like to say tonight that, you see, uh, for a person to really recognize the essence of life, we got to detach ourselves from the material things of this world because material things are okay, but they are not okay as a definition of human beings. The Bible said that man became a living soul. So you see, the essence of man is the one aspect of, of, of God that was blown into this clay. And as a result, something that wasn't existing, which was the soul, was created as a result of the coming into the man of the breath of God, or the life of God, or the spirit of God, as you might choose to call it. Well, so what does that mean then? What does that say about us then? It just says that as a human being, we got to look at how this man that was formed, how he acted and how he behaved. The first day this man was created, according to the Bible, this man could talk uh, and actually behave himself like a full-grown man. Well, if you ever give birth to a child and the very first day the child can just sit up and talk to you and talk as if it's your friend and your co-equal, my goodness, there's going to be some trouble that day. But however, when God gave birth to his son, because this person was called the son of God, when God gave birth to his son, that's exactly what a guy could do. This, uh, this fellow could behave as if he was a completely matured person. He could speak and he could speak sense. He, he wasn't talking like a child, he was talking like an adult. And to crown it all, when God did brought the rest of his creation to this person and he said hey you know what i have put enough into you i know you are full of sufficient wisdom to be able to name all these things now come on just just get on it and, and let's see how you do i know you're going to do fine and then man could do what the professors couldn't do i mean he didn't have to go to school to know that much so he was able to name everything. Well, that would have been the case and would have stayed the case. But unfortunately, something went wrong somewhere along the line. You see, before whatever went wrong went wrong, people didn't have problems. They had a job, yes. God gave man work. He said, well, here's the guy in dress and keep it. So the thing is that uh, work was something that was ordained which, which was a way of entertaining man and keeping man occupied and providing satisfaction to him so it's okay to work what is not okay is it isn't okay to labor labor and work are different you see where people work and they have to sweat you know and and really kill themselves to make ends meet you know that those things started happening only after the fall of man. That's when tons and tissues came up and that's when God told them, well, if you have to get produce from the earth, you have to sweat to get it. I mean, uh, uh, the fact is, if somebody is in Christ, he got to recognize that God is doing in us the thing that he did in Adam and Adam lost it. Well, the Bible said in, in Genesis chapter 3, the verse number 7, that uh, 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 their eyes were opened and then they saw that they were naked. That, I mean, it's interesting to know when, when, when scripture is saying their eyes were opened because the fact is their eyes were opened all along. Their eyes were opened when, you know, by the time Adam could see this woman and say, wow, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I look at everything and name them, but there was nobody like me or somebody that could really match the kind of caliber and the kind of race that I come from. But this one, woman, wonderful, she will be called woman. I mean, this person was seen. He, he, he was seen. He could really appreciate what he saw. So obviously, their eyes were opened means something other than just, you know, your eyes being opening and seeing. Uh, what I believe really did happen there is that when they, they sinned, when they ate what the devil, you know, the devil told them that, look, if you eat the fruit of the tree, your eyes will open and then you will be able to uh, uh, operate 
on God's level. Well, here was a people who were being operating already on God's level, and the devil came and lied to them, and the seeing that they had was negative. Because now, they never really took notice, serious notice of their body. They didn't put any serious value on their body till when they, they, they sinned, and then they took notice of their body. They became body conscious people instead of spirit conscious people, and that's when problems started. You see, uh, so, so, so tonight, my basic message to you in case you are not born again, in case you haven't given your life to Christ, is that your telephone line and your direct connection with God is still dead like Adam and his, and his, and his, and his wife, their own, went dead. And uh, for you to have a reconnection, you got to be born again. How do you get born again? Or what does it mean to be born again? Well, it simply means that when Jesus Christ came, he came as the last of the species of the people who created the mess. The Bible said the first Adam was the man who ate the fruit with his wife. Well, the, that, that is supposed to say that there were a series of Adams, but after this Adam, there came the last Adam. And the Bible said this Adam, when he came, he came to end that species. And, 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 and therefore, to open the door and become a mediator for another new kind of species, which you call the new creation. Or... Sometimes in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, it is called the sons of God. The Bible says that the whole of creation is waiting, you know, in travail for the manifestation of the sons of God. What does it mean? It means that there is a restoration that makes man capable of functioning the, the way he was before the fall came. And so uh, this evening, I'd like to point it out to you. Jesus, you've got to give your life to Jesus. It's important for you to be born again. It's important for you to have your connection restored. It's important for you to act the way Adam acted. You know, a person never went to university where he could know everything. A person was born in day number one. He could talk completely and, and be sensible and, and do sensible things like an adult. That is God's creation. So you see, when you are born again, the truth of the matter is, when somebody gives his or her life to Christ, his spirit person is born again. That connection is restored. And from that point onwards, the person can grow at whatever pace they want. Well, I'd like to encourage you tonight that a lot of changes can come to you, but it all depends upon you. If you are willing to um, give God a chance, you know, invite Jesus into your life, then there is, there is that connection that will be restored to you tonight. Number two, if you are already a believer, well, you've got to recognize one thing, that we are living in times where that connection has to remain intact and to remain alive. It has to be a live wire so that you are able to operate, I mean, not as a body-conscious person, but as a God-conscious person. Because as you operate in God consciousness, that is when you will be able to do what people normally call the impossible. The Bible said, he that is born of the spirit is spirit, and he that is born of the flesh is flesh. You cannot be flesh and spirit at the same time. you got to be either one or the other. And tonight, I'm challenging you that God is calling you, if you're a human being, God is calling you back to himself. you got to surrender your life to Jesus. you got to come into the born-again experience. you got to come to the place where you to know that you know that you know something has happened to you. I'm inviting you to come and test something which those who are genuinely born, genuinely born again have also tested. And the simple truth of the matter is, when you test that one, you will know. I mean, there is a difference between having a theory and having an experience. You will know. You will have a knowing. There will be that knowing in your spirit person that you are connected back to your source. And therefore, whatever your source can do, that is exactly what you can also do. The Bible said all things are possible to God, but the Bible also said all things are possible to him that believes. So when you get to the place where you are connected back to your source again, you could do what the one who you are connected to can do because of your faith in him. Well, tonight, I want to say that there are many challenges in our world. And the question is, how are you connected? Are you connected to the flesh or are you connected to the spirit? Because if you are not born again, you are just locked up there, connected to the spirit. You see, the moment your lifeline cut, 
Well, then their spirit consciousness died, and so their only connection was to the flesh. So now they became flesh conscious people. They had all these limitations, and their language was, I cannot, I cannot, it's not possible, it cannot happen. You know, everything went negative. But you see, that's also one of the reasons why God is still in the process of opening eyes of people. Because there is a sin that is good and there is a sin that is bad. In Second Kings chapter 6, the verse number 17, uh, Elisha had to pray for his servant and say, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Well, in the, short, the, truth, uh, the, 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 the long and short of it was that this man, his eyes was open in a way. Because this time around, he was a man who can still look at the natural and see the body and recognize the body and his functions, but he could also see very well in the realms of the spirit. And he could tell that, look, there are human beings there who are uh, uh, guarded against us, but then there are also spirit entities there, and the number of the spirit entities are far in excess of the number of the physical pe people who are against them. Therefore, his faith level changed. Jesus was a man who operated on this level. And, and you can tell that Jesus never had a problem one day in his life. One time people were going to kill him, you know, they took him to the brow of the hill of Nazareth to throw him over. The Bible says he just, he just turned around and passed through them and went his way. Another time somebody wanted to, uh, to ask him about a pain taxes, Jesus said, go cast fish. And the moment he spoke, there was a fish who was called, and the fish that made himself ready, uh, to go get, you know, the two coins and, and, and become the kind of fish who knew which hook it was supposed to come and swallow. So it swallowed no other person's hook but the hook of Peter. And at the end of the day, to cut a long story short, this man was connected to God so he could do things. He could heal the sick. He could cast out demons. He could raise the dead. He could give freely everything that he saw that Father has for his people. My question is, are you willing to be a solution and an answer in this final hour? Or would you rather prefer to be in that situation where you become a victim? And you are not sure what is happening to you from one moment to the next? Well, life as we know it on this planet, I don't know how soon it's going to end, but I can tell you that difficult times are coming. And so when you're a believer, one of the things I want you to know is that you're going to stay connected. How do you stay connected? You stay connected in prayer. You stay connected in praises. You stay connected in worship. And, and, and then, of course, there are things you need to avoid if you have to stay connected. And one of the things you need to avoid is you need to avoid uh, 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 distractions. Because the world is a distraction. The flesh is a distraction. Whatever men do and men create could be a distraction. Whatever it is that God created, trees, birds, etc., etc., it's not easy for those ones to be distract, distractions if you just observe them. But the things that men made, they could be serious distractions because most of the things that men made, they made it for very, very uh, complex and selfish reasons. So tonight, I'm giving, uh, I'm giving opportunity to anybody that says, I want to renew my relationship with God. Uh, of course, to another person who also says, look, uh, I have a relationship with God, uh, but it has gone stale, and I want to step it up to the next level. And then, of course, to this person who is saying, look, all these things that you are saying, I don't really know, I've not experienced uh, before. Well, the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. you got to take a decision for Jesus. you got to ask Jesus, come into my life. I, I believe that you died for my, my own sins, according to the scriptures, that you rose up for my justification. And I can I can tell you that from that moment onwards, something is going to happen. There's going to be a reality that will hit you that is stronger than the reality that hit Israel when they came out of uh, the Egyptian bondage from the iron furnace. You know, it's going to be so strong that you will know that you know that you know that something has happened. Uh, well, um, I just want to um, you know on the screen right now you 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 will find. Um, the numbers to call in case you you want to call and uh, to 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 register the fact that you want to give your life to christ you are free to call uh, if also you want to call so that uh, we can pray with you for for god to touch your life revive you and renew you again you could as well do that in case of course you have a challenge you are like okay i'm, I'm sick i need the hand of god upon my life I want to just believe God with you that the Lord will heal you. 
especially if you are a believer, you know that healing is a children's bread, and God is happy to heal you and heal you so well that you don't have to face that kind of sickness again for the rest of your life. So at the moment, the lines are opening, uh, are opened, and uh, uh, we'll be glad to hear from you. God bless you. I want to just believe God with you that the Lord especially if you are.